Over in India, the ruling Congress party must be eligible for some kind of prize for scandal. Already battered by charges of wrongdoing involving senior leaders and ministers, the party's first family is now under attack. Here's our New Delhi contributor, Aljoy Bose. The target this time is none other than Congress Supremo, Sonia Gandhi's son-in-law, Robert Wadra. He has been accused of using his family connections to acquire vast properties through sweetheart deals with the country's leading real estate business group. The charges were first leveled at a dramatic press conference last week by Arvind Kejriwal, leader of India Against Corruption, the activist group that has been carrying on a fierce public crusade over the past year. Launching a new political party this month, the group decided to begin with a bang, targeting India's most prominent political dynasty, the Gandhis, who have ruled the Congress and dominated the country's politics for the past many decades. They have alleged that Indian realty giant DLF sold Vadra prime properties at throwaway prices in the capital New Delhi and the neighboring state of Haryana, and also offered him interest-free loans without asking for collateral. The Gandhi son-in-law, a small-time brassware exporter, is said to have boosted his personal fortune from a modest $100,000 to well over $50 million in just a few years. Rattled by this onslaught, Vadra, instead of putting up a credible defense, sought to mock his accusers. Interestingly, and perhaps underlining the growing importance of social media in India, he did so on Facebook, describing the anti-corruption activists as mango people in a banana republic. This was a particularly ill-advised remark. Mango people appears to be a play on words of the Hindi colloquial term that means ordinary people or the common man. It also means mango. While this was clearly contemptuous of average citizens, calling India a banana republic made even less sense. After all, the Gandhis have ruled it for so many years. Facing even more criticism for his intemperate Facebook post, Vadra hastily closed down his account, lamenting that people had no sense of humor. Too late. Social media is all over him. Mathu Kishwar, prominent feminist thinker, tweeted, Vadra's utter contempt for governance is understandable, since he found it so easy to manipulate. Someone called Queen Bee angrily warned, Dear Vadra, this mango people will peel skin out of your body and get back every penny that you suck from our country. Another tweet predicted, it is the mango people of India that will teach Congress a lesson in the general election. Loving it all, the leader of India Against Corruption, Arvind Kejriwal, quipped that the mango men would prove to be the nemesis of the powerful. So far, the Congress leadership and the government appear flat-footed by the attack on a member of its holy cow, the Gandhi family. They have failed to either dissociate themselves from Vatra or order an impartial probe. Indeed, the ruling party may find it difficult to regain moral authority, and the only way out could be an early national poll. For Link Asia, I'm Ajoy Bose in New Delhi. Indian investors have made their judgment, and the real estate company that Vajra is involved with has lost 11% of its value on the stock market. Now on U.S. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.